In this video, we're going to do some review, and so we're going to review lessons 1.4, 1.5, 1 1.6, and 1.7. So let's just get into it. 1.4. You have to remember what it means for angles to be adjacent, or not adjacent, or a linear pair. So tell whether the angles are only adjacent, adjacent and form a linear pair, or not adjacent. So to be adjacent, angles have to share a vertex, and they have to share one common side, and they can't overlap. So for example, let's look at angles 1 and 2. Here's angle 1, and here's angle 2. They both share a vertex. The two angles do not overlap each other, <clears throat> and they do share a common side, which is this ray that I'm highlighting. So they are adjacent. But not only are they adjacent, they're also a linear pair. Because if I add their measures together, I'm going to get 180 degrees. In other words, together they form a straight angle. So the answer to number 21 is they're both adjacent and a linear pair. How about for 4 and 5? Well, here's angle 4 and here's angle 5. They do share a common vertex, and they do share a common side, so they're adjacent. But they're not a linear pair, because if I was to add their measures, I wouldn't get 180 degrees. So the answer to 4 and 5 is they're only adjacent. How about 3 and 4? Well, 3 and 4 do share a common vertex, but that's as far as it goes. They don't share a common side. The two sides of angle 3 are here and here. And the two sides of angle 4 are here and here. So we would simply say neither. If the measure of angle T is 5x minus 10 degrees, find the measure of each of the following. <clears throat> what is the supplement of angle T? So the question is, what angle adds to angle T and gives us 180 degrees? Here's how we calculate that. Is that 180 minus 5x minus 10 degrees. This is equal to 180 minus 5x plus 10, which is 190 minus 5x. And there it is. That's the supplement to angle T. So if I was to take 190 minus 5x degrees and add 5x minus 10 degrees, Remember, the definition of supplementary angles means they add up to 180, right? So the 5x's cancel away. Oops, there you go. The 5x's cancel away. And 190 minus 10 is 180 degrees. And so it works. All right, let's do the complement. What is the complement of angle T? Well, in this case, we take 90 minus 5x minus 10. And over the years, I've discovered that mostly students forget to distribute that negative. So that's 90 minus 5x plus 10. And so the complement is 100 minus 5x degrees. So the definition of complementary means that the two angles add up to 90. So if I take 100 minus 5x and if I add uh, 5x minus 10, again, the 5x's cancel. 100 minus 10 is 90 degrees. And so there's the complement. And so that is how you do problems from 1.4. All right, <clears throat> let's look at 1.5. Find the perimeter and the area of each figure. 
Now the perimeter of a rectangle is equal to 2 times the width plus 2 times the height or you could say 2 times the length plus 2 times the width or 2 times the length plus 2 times the height. Height and width are kind of relative depending on how the rectangle's positioned. So for number 1, the perimeter is 2 times 20 inches plus 2 times 8 inches. Now the final answer has to be in inches. So this is 40 plus 16 inches, which is 56 inches. And so the perimeter is 56 inches. Now the area, and so 20 inches times 8 inches. And the units for area need to be inches squared. So this is going to be 160 inches squared. And that's the area. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do number two for you. And then after I do number two, I'm going to let you pause the video and try to do uh, numbers three and four on your own. And then I'll give you the answers, OK? All right, here's number two. The perimeter of a triangle is the sum of all the sides. So <clears throat> one of the sides is 2x plus 20. Another side is 13. And another side is 3x minus 11. So we add our like terms. 2x plus 3x is 5x. 20 and 13 make 33. 33 minus 11 is 22. So this would be plus 22. I'm not going to write down any units because the problem itself doesn't give me any units to work with. The area of a triangle is one half of its base times its height. So I take one half of 2x plus 20 times 13. And I only have to multiply this one half into the first part. So one half of both of these gives me x plus 10 times 13. And so that's equal to 13x plus 130. And there's the area. OK, I want you to pause the video now. And I want you to try numbers 3 and 4 on your own. And then resume the video, and I'll give you the answers. And here we are, the perimeter and area for number three, and the perimeter and the area for number four. Question number five, find the circumference and area of a circle with radius six meters. Use the pi key on your calculator and round to the nearest tenth. OK, formula for circumference is 2 pi times the radius. My radius is 6 meters. So this is 2 pi times 6 meters. And so this is 12 pi meters. I'm going to use my calculator now and round to the nearest tenth. So the circumference is approximately 37 point. Oops, that's an ugly 37. 30, oh, I hate it when it does that. 37.7 meters. Okay. Area is pi r squared. The radius is 6 meters, and so this becomes pi times 6 meters squared, which is going to be 36 pi meters squared. Now, let's type that into our calculator and then round to the nearest tenth. So the area <coughs> is going to be approximately 
point one meters squared. And there we go. Lesson 1.6. Question number six. Find the coordinates for the midpoint of segment XY with end points negative 4, 6, and y is at 3, 8. So negative 4, 6 is where x is located. Negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. So here's x, and y is at 3, 8. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And so there's point y. Looking for the coordinates of the midpoint. So roughly, I want to know what's the halfway point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to average these two numbers, or these two ordered pairs. So negative 4 plus 3 divided by 2, comma, 6 plus 8 divided by 2. Remember, the midpoint is going to be an ordered pair. Negative, negative 1 over 2, comma, 6 plus 8 is 14, and half of 14 is 7. So the midpoint would be at negative 1 half, comma, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So right about there would be the midpoint. Okay, try and do number seven on your own. And then I'll give you the answer. Okay, so this is kind of a problem. They give us one of the endpoints, and they give us the midpoint. So to find the other endpoint, what we have to do is we have to set up an equation like this. Six plus something divided by two is nine. And negative 2 plus something divided by 2 is 3. Solve those two equations, you're going to get 12 and 8. So the other endpoint is at 12, 8. Number 8. <clears throat> Use the distance formula to find QR and ST to the nearest tenth. And then determine if QR is congruent to ST. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do this. I'm going to use the distance formula like they recommend. So let's zoom in a little bit here. Good. Oop, too far. There we go. All right. So the distance formula, Q is located at 4, 3. So let's write that down. R is located at negative 3, comma, 1. T is at 5, comma, negative 2. And S seems to be located at negative 2, comma, negative 4. All right, so let's find QR first. And that's going to be the square root of 4 minus negative 3 squared plus 3 minus 1 squared. Now this is how you do the operations. 4 minus negative 3 is 7 and 7 squared is 49. 3 minus 1 is 2 and 2 squared is 4. Now what is 49 plus 4? It's 53. So the distance of QR is the square root of 53. Okay, so QR is the square root of 53. Now let's find ST. So ST is the square root of <clears throat> 5 minus negative 2 squared plus negative 2 minus negative 4 squared. Now the way this works is 5 minus negative 2 is 7. 
7 squared is 49. Negative 2 minus negative 4 is positive 2, and 2 squared is 4. So the final answer is the square root of 53. I get the same thing. Then determine if the two segments are congruent. Well, the answer is yes. What's the reason? Well, I know that QR is congruent to ST because QR equals ST. In other words, their measures are the same. When I don't put the bar above the segment, then I'm talking about their measures. When I put the bar above the segments, then I'm talking about the segments themselves. And so their measures are the same, and so therefore they're congruent. Okay, I want you to use the distance formula. And then from the distance formula, number nine, I'm going to give you the solution. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and then use the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance to the nearest results from f as at 4 comma 3 to g is at negative 3 comma negative 2. So calculating using the distance formula I get negative 3 minus 4 squared plus negative 2 minus 3 squared. This is the square root of 49 plus 25. And that's the square root of 74, 74 which is approximately 8.6. Using the Pythagorean theorem approach, I draw points G and F and connect them. So here's my segment. Then I draw a dashed line downwards and a dashed line over. And I'm going to simply count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So one of the sides is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the other side is 7. C would be the hypotenuse. So 25 plus 49 is C squared. So 74 is C squared. And what I have to do now is I have to take the square root of this number. Because I don't want C squared, I want C and so c is the square root of 74. So that's using both the distance formula and <clears throat> the Pythagorean theorem. So okay, here's lesson 1.7. I want to identify the transformation and then use arrow notation to describe the transformation. Number 10. The only way this could have happened is by reflection. And so the kind of transformation here that happened is a reflection. Now I have to describe the transformation using arrow notation. So triangle ABC became triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. ABC is the pre-image. A prime, B prime, C prime is the image. How about number 11? Number 11, the transformation is a translation. It was a rigid shift to the right and upwards. So, parallelogram QRSP became parallelogram Q prime, R prime, S prime, T prime. Number 12. A graphic designer used the translation x comma y becomes x minus 3 comma y plus 2 to transform the square hjkl. Find the coordinates and graph of the image of the square. So this rule means 3 to the left and 2 upwards. So all points are going to travel 3 to the left, 1, 2, 3 and 2 upwards, so there's h prime, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and there's j prime, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and there's l prime, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 
and there's k prime. And so now I've drawn the figure. Find the coordinates. Okay, where is h prime located? h prime is located at negative 1, comma, 3. j prime is located at 2, comma, 3. l prime is located at negative 1, comma, 0. And k prime is located at 2, comma, 0. Number 13, a figure has vertices at x is at 1, comma, 1, y is at 3, comma, 1, and z is at 3, comma, 4. All right, let's go ahead and graph these. 1, comma, 1. So there's x. 3, comma, 1. There is y. And 3, comma, 4. And there's Z. So it's a triangle. After a transformation, the image of the figure has the vertices. X prime is at negative 1, negative 1. So there's X prime. Y prime is negative 3, negative 1. So there's Y prime. And Z prime is negative 3, negative 4. There's z prime. So here's my image. Grab the pre-image and image. Okay, that part's done. Then identify the transformation. So how did we go from here to here? Well, it was a rotation. And let's assume it was a counterclockwise rotation. So I would say counterclockwise. And there we go. So there's the review for 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, and 1.7. God bless you, wherever you are today.